Hey guys, in my unboxing and first impressions of this, I was pretty impressed on the way that JLabs made their tablet stand out a little from other budget tablets. With the coupon for a free pair of earbuds and a pass for 20 free songs, along with an equalizer pre-installed, which made me think this tablet was aiming towards music listeners. It turns out that you have to pay around five to six dollars for shipping the earbuds, which sound like ten dollar headphones. And the pass for 20 free songs doesn't even work when I try the link. So much for that. But moving past all of that, how is the tablet itself? Let's find out. Starting off with the design, it looks quite familiar to a few other 7-inch budget tablets you may have seen with a 0.3 megapixel camera on the top left and the 1024 by 600 resolution, giving it a 169 ppi or pixels per inch, which is fairly low, but it's just as you'd expect from a tablet of this caliber. All of the controls are on top, starting from the left, you've got your power button, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a micro USB to charge from, and the volume controls. The buttons are a little too flushed, a little less tactile than what I'd like to see. Behind the volume key, you'll find a micro SD card slot if the 8 gigs of onboard storage isn't enough for you since you can only utilize about 5 gigs of it. The back is made out of this plastic texture with the speaker on the bottom right, the JLab logo in the middle, and a reset button on the top left. The speaker sounds very tinty, but there is an equalizer pre-installed like I've said before, and it helps out a little bit. Turning this on takes a really long time, about 54 seconds to be exact, but there is a quick boot mode which can be activated if you go into settings, then accessibility, and scroll all the way down, and it's going to be on the bottom next to high speed mode, which I'll talk about later on. With quick boot on, it takes about 4 seconds, which is a huge difference. The one thing this tablet doesn't have is Bluetooth, but it's not really a big deal, for me at least. In terms of specs, this tablet is packing in all winner box chip A23 dual core Cortex A7 1.2 GHz processor with 512 megabits of DDR3 RAM. I ran a few benchmark tests using the Antutu benchmark app and it usually gets a little over 14,000. This looks like a really low score compared to other devices but remember that you're paying a fraction of what most of these cost. Even so, it can still handle basic tasks such as checking your email, watching videos, browsing the web smoothly for the most part, but there are some hiccups you'll notice here and there. When high speed mode is enabled, you'll see an increase by about 500 in the Antutu benchmark, and performance wise, you won't notice as many stutters or hiccups. I've played a few games with high speed on, and they ran well for the most part. Don't expect to play graphic intense games on here because you'll notice a lot of lag. However, there were a few issues. One problem is the screen itself. Looking at it straightforward in portrait or landscape mode is annoying because one side looks dark, but if you tilt it to that side, it gets even darker and the other side would get brighter. I personally preferred having the tablet in landscape mode with the bright side up and lock the rotation there. Wasn't too much of a problem after that. The other issue was that the screen became unresponsive at times, but at the time when this video was being made, there was an update over the air which stated it was for some bug fixes and improvements, but a few people who I've talked to said that they still have this problem even after the update. As for me, it hasn't really been occurring after the update, but the volume control still tends to be unresponsive at times. I'll try to keep tabs on this issue and update you guys in the description. If you're the kind of person who takes their tablet out a lot, battery life is going to be an important factor in buying this. 
This is packing a 2000 milliamp hour lithium ion battery and it's awful. It usually lasted me around 6 hours with around 2 hours of on screen time with high speed mode on. When it's off, it lasts about an hour longer. It takes about 2 hours to charge back. Overall, I'm going to give this a 6.2 out of 10. It's got a decent processor for the price, but it does have a bad screen with its side viewing angles and all, its weak battery life, and other minor issues. While there are quite some issues with this tablet, it just comes back to show you that this is a budget tablet with more flaws than other ones, but it's not unusable. I was still able to play videos, games, browse the web, check my email, and more. I just had to tilt the screen to my preference and keep it that way. Though I would recommend you to check out a few other tablets at around the price point as I will be putting my recommendation on a good tablet for around the price range in the description. Give this video a like if it helped you out and if you have any questions feel free to put it in the comments section. Thanks for watching.